Hello all. So in the previous tutorial, we have discussed about the processor configuration access port PCAP, which supports partial reconfiguration as well as full reconfiguration. Now the PCAP interface is only available in uh, Zing chips, okay, uh, which has some kind of PS. Now the traditional interface in Xilinx for supporting internal partial reconfiguration is called ICAP, Internal Configuration Access Port. And this has been the interface from a long time, uh, from five series like Vitex 5, Vitex 6, and all the seven series, uh, Vitex 7, Kintex, Artix, they all have this internal interface for supporting partial reconfiguration. Now through ICAP interface, you can do only partial reconfiguration. It doesn't support full reconfiguration and uh, this is how the interface will look like so this guy has a clock this is like a chip enable and this is like read write select and this is through which you will send data basically the bitstream this is the interface through which you will read back the bitstream as i mentioned before similar to pcap this guy also supports reading back bitstream okay, from the fpga fabric and whether to read or write that is controlled through this interface so write is low read is high on this pin and this signal will become high whenever the interface is high and this is valid only for read operation during write operation uh, this pc will be always low you don't have to worry about it and the other part of the interface it is directly going to the fpga configuration memory uh, through which it configures the fabric now there are certain conditions so the maximum clock frequency supported by ICAP is 100 megahertz and the interface is 32 bits so the maximum reconfiguration speed that you can expect is 400 megabytes per second okay which is much higher than PCAP which is almost 130 megabytes per second now I, uh, I will show you where this exactly is. so if you go to our FPGA fabric here so you can see some okay, primitives here. So when I click something, he will show what is the type of this primitive. So you can see ICAP X0 Y1. Usually every Sirings FPGA, it will have two ICAP interfaces. So we have one here and we have another one here. But at a given point in time, only one of them can be active. Okay, so if you want to switch between them, again, we have to send some certain uh, sequence of commands to them so that one shuts off and the other becomes active. Anyway, we are not worried about it. Uh, another thing, usually when we are using PCAP and ICAP, only one of them should be enabled at a time. So that we will uh, do from software as far as uh, Zing is concerned. Other FPGAs, there is no PCAP interface, so no need to worry. You can always use ICAP interface for uh, supporting partial reconfiguration. Now, <clears throat> Xilinx, they used to provide an IP uh, core which contains this uh, ICAP interface because uh, you can see like it doesn't follow any standard interface. Okay, So they used to have an Axilite IP, Xilinx hardware ICAP, I guess, and which used to instantiate this uh, primitive directly inside the code. Okay, you can directly instantiate it. You will get the instantiation template for this IP and we can directly instantiate it. So if you want to get the instantiation template, uh, we can go to tool language templates. Here you can get instantiation template for a lot of primitives. For example, you want a buffer or something, you don't know how to instantiate it, you can search uh, buff G, global clock buffer. This is the clock buffer through which the clock signal will be routed, things like that. So uh, I can get ICAP also here. This is not coming as a IP core, it is coming as an instantiation template. So this is the instantiation template for ICAP. So this you can directly instantiate it in your code if you want to. Now what Silence did was they used to provide an IP core. I guess it is still there. This one, XC hardware ICAP. Which follows the Axi light interface, you can see, through which uh, you can interface with the processor system. Now, this is an Axi light interface, that means you need to write what is a word by word to this IP. 
So although this guy supports 400 Mbps reconfiguration speed, the actual throughput of this IP, Axie hardware ICAP, was very, very low. So I have developed uh, one of the IP codes by myself. Again, no big deal. It is basically an IP which instantiates this hardware ICAP with a DMA controller so that we can have very high speed reconfiguration. So again, that was published back in 2014. It was called Zycap to indicate this is a ICAP IP for Zinc. But of course, you can use it with uh, other processes also. If you want to interface with microblades, uh, that is also possible. So you can see the throughput. So PCAP is around 128, and the one provided by Xilinx, it was giving only 19 Mbps. And this IP, which has an internal DMA controller, and it has an Axi Lite interface for configuration, as well as an Axi for stream interface for high-speed data transfer from memory to the ICAP. Uh, it can provide close to 382 megabytes per second. Okay, so it's it's quite fast actually, more than three times faster than our PCAP, this ICAP IP. So we are going to use ICAP uh, in the next project, but uh, effectively we are going to use the ZICAP IP, which has an ICAP inside it. Okay, again the source code I will provide, and you can freely use it. Now ZICAP it. It is not only this IP, it comes with an associated driver and uh, it has a lot of features like uh, it can prefetch bitstream from SD card to your memory. Uh, you know, like in memory, you have to allocate memory for storing this bitstream. Now, if you have a lot of bitstream, you may need a lot of memory okay, for each partial bitstream. Uh, that may be some memory wastage. So what this guy does is he will cache the bitstream from SD card and whenever you fetch a new bitstream from the SD card provided there is no more memory allocated for storing the bitstream, he will replace the least recently used bitstream with this new bitstream. So some kind of caching supports, things like that are there. And this can also support uh, execution in parallel with uh, reconfiguration. So I will show you when we write the software. That means while the FPGA undergoes reconfiguration your processor can still do other processes or the remaining portion of the FPGA can still operate okay so we will have overlapped reconfiguration with execution that will actually improve the overall system performance okay so there are some features to uh, support this okay so now for the example design, I'm using the same block design that we used last time, uh, the same image processing IP one. Uh, only thing is I'm interfacing my Zycap also to the system. So what I did was, yeah, so to the local IP core directory, I have added this IP also, Zycap IP, and uh, I have integrated it with the system. Okay, so this is basically the same system as before. Only difference is we have Zycap. Okay, so this is our Zycap IP. So you can see it has a actually light interface which will be eventually connected to the GP port. And it also has a stream interface which is actually connected to HP1 interface here, high performance one. Uh, why I chose a different interface? Because as I mentioned before, uh, ICAP or Zycap, it can work only at 100 megahertz or below. And the remainder of the circuit uh, system in our image processing, it is working at 148 megahertz, 148. So if you directly connect that clock here, it, it is not going to work. Okay, So that's the uh, physical level restriction. It cannot work more than 100 megahertz. So uh, I have taken another 100 megahertz clock directly from the PS. You can see this clock zero was 100, but that I'm giving to the uh, clocking wizard here to generate the other clock it won't be a good idea to take a connection from here to getting 100 megahertz that's a bad idea you can either create one more clock here which gives 100 megahertz but uh, it this this ip it cannot give 100 megahertz now uh, the reason i have mentioned before from 100 he is generating 148 so he cannot generate 100 due to some restrictions of the PLN. So I'm creating a fresh 100 megahertz clock from the PS itself. And that clock is coming through uh, FCLK clock one interface.
you can see it is 100 megahertz so that clock is what is feeding uh, my Zycap, the smart interconnect and my HP1 interface so this I am using HP1 separately because HP1 is going to run at 100 megahertz and HP0 is going to run at 148 megahertz that's why there are two separate clocks if all the system is running at 100 megahertz you can use a, a single clock and you can use a sim single HP port okay. Okay, so that's the only difference. Otherwise, the system is the same in all other aspect. Now, the thing is, uh, since I changed my block design for generating the partial reconfiguration, things like that, we will have to go through the same entire steps that we followed in the previous tutorial. You have to synthesize the static region. You have to synthesize the PR module, then combine them, things like that. Okay, now. It consumes a lot of time. So uh, what I have done is, for example, I already have the flow planning constraints from the previous tutorial. So I don't want to change the flow planning because it's the same module which I am planning to reconfigure. And these, uh, these properties, like uh, it is a reconfigured module and uh, we need to reset after reconfiguration. All those information I already have in my constraints file, this XTC file. Now, provided you already have the floor planning information, instead of sitting and giving commands one by one, I can just execute a single tickle script and it will do all the process for you. Okay, so this script also I will upload, so you can also do it. So if if you look at my project directory now, let me close this project also. What basically I need are my my project which has that block design things like that i have the netlist folder with the netlist for my three modes of my convolution part and the ip core directory where i have image processing ip as well as zycap and the sources folder where i have my constraints here the two constraints file as well as the block design so block design is actually sitting here okay this dot bd file now this much is enough and i can directly execute my tickle script okay so i will upload this project as such you can directly run it the only possible difference is if the project version is different you will have to open the project and uh, you have to do report IP status and you need to upgrade all the IPs to your version of uh, Vivado, whether 2018 or 2019, whichever version you are using, and save the project, close it, then you can also run the same script. Okay, so this is the script we are going to use, and you can see what it basically does. So it just opens your project and it it sets up what is your target device and all. This is our target chip and the uh, and these are like uh, his synthesis settings. So depending upon the Vivado, you just give you a Vivado version here. I'm using 2017 now. So I'm keeping 2017 and you give whatever version you have. And this generate target, this is the one which generates all the files corresponding to the IP code, right? You remember like uh, when you generate IP, there is an option like generate all targets so this is doing same thing so he generates all the vlog and vhdl files for your ips all the ips now this one it will generate the uh, this one this will generate your dot sdk folder this is same as exporting to sdk okay so this guy will export to sdk okay so let me keep local reference he will create this folder .sdk then your hdf hardware definition file is exported there then he just runs the synthesis after synthesis he saves the netlist for static in the netlist folder 
then he reads the DCP file netlist for one of the reconfigure module. He reads Sobel here, you can see. Then plays opt place route. After that, he saves the netlist. He makes it again black box. So same steps that we did in previous tutorial, and they are just in tickle script format. Okay, so that's one thing. And towards the end, you will see, okay, this I guess you remember from last type. This is for generating the bitstream in, in PCAP format. Now ICAP, he also uses bin file instead of bit file, dot bin. But the bin file format expected by ICAP is again different from the bin file format expected from PCAP. Okay, so the bin file format expected from ICAP is the same format as the bit file that you will get, except with the header part. Header part. You just have to remove the header part. You can either do it manually, or when I call this command write bitstream, I can use this option hyphen bin file, and he will generate the bin file for you, which is compatible with ICAP, and this will generate the bin file compatible with PCAP. Okay, so that's it. Now this script you can run either from Vivado or from your command prompt. Both are fine. If you are running from Vivado, just open Vivado and go to that uh, tickle, what is a tab, and you can run it. Okay, so don't open the project and run it because he will give error saying like project is already open. Or you just comment this line out. When you are running it from the project, I will, I will show you both. So, if you are running from command prompt or shell in your Linux, okay, you go to the folder where the script file is located. So I have kept it here. Now, all the reference in the script um, is with reference to this position of the script. Okay, so he is assuming. The script is sitting in the same folder where you have the project. That is how the script is written. And you just say Vivado mode TCL. You are just saying Vivado is running in TCL mode hyphen source and the script name. We are script dot okay. Now, if your Vivado is configured in your system path, this will directly run. Uh, for me, the Vivado in my system path. Is version 2018. So let me give the full path to Vivado. C Silinx Vivado. I'm using this one. Bin Vivado. This is where Vivado is sitting. More TCL hyphen source via script. If you have a single version of Vivado, you can just call Vivado. Now he will run. The end script. Okay, so again, Vivado it has three modes of operation. Uh, it can have a tickle mode, it can have a project mode, it can have a batch mode. So Vivado can be run in different modes that we may discuss uh, in separate tutorial. Um, all features of Vivado. Okay, I got this error because the Vivado version I mentioned is wrong. It is 2014.2. Yeah. So if the versions are not matching between the project and the Vivado that you are using here, you will get the same error. So you just type exit to come out of the uh, tickle mode and again rerun. Now this time everything works. It may take maybe uh, 45, 50 minutes, but the good thing is you don't have to be with your computer. You can go and do your job and he will finish everything for you by the time you come back. Okay, so you, I will come back once he finishes everything. So now Vivado has completed everything. Uh, it took some time, but still he has finished everything. Now if you go back, now you will see like he has automatically created this bitstream folder and he has also created uh, these folders inside our netlist. Okay, so he has saved the static DCP files here and the different DCPs for each configuration here. Now in netlist, sorry, in bitstream, okay, so this is the complete bitstream bit file and this is the bin file for this complete bitstream. Okay, and 
this is a partial bit stream. This is the bin file for this bit stream. And this one, this bin, is the bin for the PCAP. So as I mentioned before, if you look at this bit stream and this bin, they have same order except this header part is not there. So after that it's all FF then 000BB. So here also you'll see same order is being followed. Okay, so that's completed. Now uh, you will also see he created that .sdk folder and the system wrapper hdf file is already exported. So because of that we can directly start our software development. You can directly go to sdk and start sdk and give your workspace as this folder or from Vivado you can launch sdk and say launch locally. Both will work. So sdk I'm again starting a new project. Let's call it uh, Zycap. Uh, I already have the code written, so I'll just import it here. I'm importing all of them, including the linker script. Again, most of them, we are just reusing our previous code. Okay. So here, compiler will come because uh, this ff.h. So we need to add the project. I mean, add the library here. Okay. So it's been observed that this fat library from Xilinx that keeps on changing with different versions of SDK. So maybe you may uh, get some error when you compile this code because of the change in this uh, file library. So you may have to change accordingly some things. Mm, I'm still using 2017 because uh, most people can upgrade this project to a newer version. Downgrading in Vivado is very difficult but upgrading a project to a new version is much easier that's why i'm still sticking with this 2017 version okay so he has compiled everything everything looks fine now here we have instead of pcap.h we have zycap.h this is the uh, new header file so here you have to make few changes when you use it for different projects one thing is this max bs number basically uh, maximum number of cached bit streams okay so here it is put three you can put any number one two three anything uh, that means he will allocate that much memory for caching the bit stream so if you if you uh, try to read a new bit stream which is not already cached he will replace it with the lru bit stream least recently used this is the size of uh, partial bit stream so that is this one which uh, we can already see here okay so this one this will be same as previous project because it's the same reconfigured region okay so this one not size on disk you need to check this size actually four seven five five six okay and this is the base address so only these two things you may want to even this one you can keep as such this one you may have to change depending upon the project that you're working on okay now uh, in the dot c file okay we have a lot of functions for initialization of uh, zycap and the caching algorithm that is also there's so all these are part of that caching algorithm interrupt handler this can again work either in interrupt mode or in polling mode also and a uh, lot of things like that okay and the main function is this one config pr bitstream this is the function which will do the partial reconfiguration and this is the function which is actually doing prefetching of bitstream from sd card to the memory if the bitstream is all not already present okay 
and this function we don't need that was for some testing uh, this one as i mentioned uh, when you are doing partial reconfiguration you need to make sure either pcap or icap only one of them is active so this function uh, it will actually disable your pcap here you can see so that your icap is the active interface for partial reconfiguration that's it now the top file this one it's more or less same as before for pcap only difference is instead of calling pcap for partial reconfiguration we'll be calling icap for partial reconfiguration so this function config pr bitstream so let me write like so bell dot bin dot bin and sharp dot bin okay depending upon the choice we are just passing that stream and he will do the configuration so you will see the name of the partial bitstream here the second one <coughs> is uh, basically telling whether this function should be blocking or non-blocking so remember last time when i showed the paper i mentioned uh, this has the feature of concurrent execution and reconfiguration so if you set this bit to one that means this function will return only after finishing partial reconfiguration if you put it zero he will call the function and he will immediately come back but the reconfiguration might not be completed now here the advantage is since the function immediately comes back your processor can do uh, some other job and before he uses the module which is being uh, reconfigured he is supposed to call this function which one this one sync so that he will make sure the reconfiguration is completed now if you set this bit to one this function is called inside this reconfiguration function itself so you can see like uh, he checks this parameter and if that parameter is one he himself calls this function so this function he is way he is just waiting for this bit to set tx done which is basically set by the interrupt handler for transferring the bit stream okay so in our case since uh, we want to do image processing and we can't do image processing unless the partial reconfiguration is over so we always keep it one okay so that's it in the software part now let's put our partial bit stream to our sd card so we have config one so these are the partial bit streams so let me just rename them so this is config one which is sobel dot bin we can put that here this is sharp this is bar okay so we take the sticker card now put it in the board and we test it so run run configuration let's configure So again here first we need to configure with the full bit stream so let me choose this config 2 dot bit full bit stream and let's program because i cap it cannot support full reconfiguration okay so full reconfiguration you need to do with jetac then we can run it from here okay let me run and uh, we have our menu like before so let's try to test one by one so one will give me the original picture to yeah he did partial reconfiguration and we have the output three and four okay the same as our pcap but the thing is icap is much faster as i mentioned before like three times faster than pcap 
so with this we will conclude our discussion on partial reconfiguration uh, in new uh, chips the, they are coming from Xilinx ultra scale and ultra scale plus devices they have one more reconfiguration interface called mcap now zinc it doesn't have it so through mcap it is actually possible to send your pitch stream through pc express and configure it okay now I I have my own IP to do it for other FPGAs. Again, we may discuss it later. For those who are interested, uh, you can check it out. It's called Direct IP. Uh, you can search for the pair problem. So that's also an open core, open source IP core which support PC Express based partial configuration. Okay, thank you. See you in the next tutorial.